So I'll kind of go over that and I'll show you again on your calculator. I'll show you again on the calculator. So first thing is a sine of pi over 6. So when you guys are doing these problems, always do the in innermost in parentheses first. Just like you guys did order of operations, do the innermost problem first. So basically, we're doing sine of pi over 6. Two class periods ago, do you guys remember we did those? I put them on the board. Sine, cosine, tangent, they're right there, right? So that's all you're doing, just sine of pi over 6. So you got to think of that unit circle saying, OK, pi over 6. Oh, that's that first angle. That first point was square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half. So sine of pi over 6 is equal to 1 half. Then we have inverse sine of 1 half. So what angle produces 1 half? Now again, there's two angles that produce 1 half. If you guys look at the unit circle, we know that this angle, pi over 6, produces 1 half. We also know that this angle, 5 pi over 6, also produces 1 half. Those are two different angles where the y coordinate is equal to 1 half. So which one is the correct answer? Does anybody remember? Y, the one on the right. Yep. The, your restriction on your quadrant for sine is the first and second quadrant. First and fourth, sorry. So therefore, pi over 6 is going to be your answer. OK. If you remember, sine of x and tangent of x had the restriction of the first and the fourth quadrant, whereas cosine had a restriction of the first and the second quadrant. So when you're finding the inverse, you're finding the angle for cosine, it has to be within the first and the second quadrant. Okay? Do you guys want me to do another one with restrictions, or do you guys think you're OK with that? You have quite a bit of these problems on your study guide as well, but 